Okay, and so now we are going to hear about uh, part of uh, the 60s, the Johnson administration. So Lyndon Baines Johnson takes over when JFK is assassinated. He gets sworn in the same day. And some of the big ideas uh, behind his uh, presidency will be the Great Society. This is, becomes his kind of catchphrase, just like the New Deal um, or the New Frontier, what uh, Kennedy was proposing, the Great Society, that America will be a great society. Um, he's going to be very interested in a lot of social programs to do that. And another tagline that gets associated with his presidency is the war on poverty, that um, LBJ and his administration are really going to try to combat poverty in America just like we would fight wars. We're going to fight uh, poverty uh, along with there's going to be a, a real physical war, uh, the Vietnam War that LBJ is going to be uh, and the country um, dragged into uh, of sorts and um, is really going to change his presidency. We'll see towards the end of this video. Along we can give him some really cool uh, kudos for being a part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which um, is the first um, law or legislation since Reconstruction to address some of the um, issues in the South, um, discrimination and harassment and protection of um, African Americans in the South from um, really terrorists um, and the South. And along with that, voting rights, because if you don't have voting rights, you don't really have much civil rights um, in 65. So uh, a Texan's family. So um, LBJ and his wife were seen as a very um, happy and successful couple, very elegant. Um, so here we see them uh, kind of getting ready for a, uh, an official um, dinner. And so, uh, once again, they continue this trend as being seen as happy and stable and in love and representing uh, the ideals of the 60s. Um, although there is some speculation that LBJ um, was unfaithful to his wife, but that was not public knowledge at the time um, and doesn't come out during his presidency to a large extent. Um, so there they are, you know, this would be kind of like a postcard they would send out to them and their dog, right? Um, uh, looking off into the sunset. So um, propaganda and campaigning uh, at its best. And, uh, you know, it does help that there's a marriage in the White House that um, some members of his family get hitched. And so that's always good for um, kind of public approval. People like weddings. Um, and along with that, um, LBJ's resume doesn't hurt as well. So he was a congressional staffer. So he like interned in Congress when he was a young guy. And, um, and then he got elected to the House of Representatives from Texas and then becomes a senator uh, in Texas and is even the majority leader. So he has a lot of experience um, with government and in the Senate. So he's very familiar with how it all works. He knows the people and he was the vice president. So, you know, he's the next guy in line. He's seen as a good candidate, somebody who has a lot of experience who um, won't be a bad fit um, once JFK is gone. And he has a lot of sympathy because of the assassination. However, um, his personality is very interesting. Um, LBJ was seen as a pretty angry guy. He um, would fly off the handle. We see the president having to pull back the VP um, from yelling and cursing at somebody um, who uh, he didn't like for whatever reason. Um, and we're going to look at some other um, behaviors here in just a moment. But um, really, this book comes out, the LBJ, uh, the architect of American ambition. And LBJ really does represent some of the high ideals and ambitions of uh, the American government and people in the 60s, that he thought he could do it all. Solve poverty, make America a great society, deal with civil rights, um, but we're going to see some things get in the way of him being successful in that uh, situation. So the Johnson treatment was that behavior I was just referencing, and he uh, tended to overpower and try to intimidate people. He was a big guy as far as height, um, and stature, and he would invade people's space, uh, getting really close. If you're any close talkers, this was kind of his uh, situation. But this was all very intentional to persuade people um, and use his personal um, kind of charm to some extent, um, a kind of a Texas charm of sorts. And rather than being elegant and charming like JFK was, um, he and pictures tell a thousand words, so we'll look at a couple. So he gets um, pretty close when he's discussing, um, in particular with his opposition, but he even did this with some of his supporters. So we can see some real close talking between him and uh, somebody 
uh, who disagrees with his policies and decisions as president. And um, there we go, we see another one, and we'll see all uh, kind of a timeline of sorts here. So they start out having at least maybe a casual conversation at a normal distance, and they get a little closer as he's finger wagging, he gets close, and then the guy's backed up on the desk. Um, so LBJ is pretty persuasive um, in, a, in a very unpresidential way, I guess. Uh, but nevertheless, um, he managed to get his way um, a lot. And the Texan style, so not afraid to show off um, whatever medical situation um, goes on there. So a very different um, style of presidency. He loved his dog, um, LBJ, uh, loved dogs, and uh, that becomes kind of the um, attention in the White House, a uh, little doggy. Um, as well as, you know, taking him for a walk, just like any normal guy, showing off the tricks, um, is always good for the cameras, and um, his idea, and puppies, everybody loves puppies, right? So if you bring in a giant basket of puppies to the White House, you're bound to be a hit um, in front of the cameras and in the news. And moving on, um, here's uh, his words on the war on poverty. There are tens of millions of Americans who are beyond uh, the welfare state, Taken as a whole, there is a culture of poverty, bad health, poor housing, low levels of aspiration, and high levels of mental distress. 20% of a nation, some 32 million people. So um, this guy, Michael Harrington, authors the book Culture of Poverty in 62, and really this reflects LBJ's um, views on things, that it's not right for America to be so prosperous and for a large percent of the country to be um, in, impoverished, and really, um, he sees it as societal, that it's not an individual's decision um, and really ability to overcome poverty, that the government and society really need to change things to free people up um, to get out of poverty. And the war on poverty continues. This is his words. Um, the great society rests on the abundance and the liberty of all people, or for all. It demands an end to the poverty and racial injustice. So these are pretty strong words and uh, a pretty cool dream, I would say. Um, and so he creates a lot of government programs that we um, have today and maybe have heard of, Medicare and Medicaid, to take care of the elderly and the young who are sick. Head Start to give kids the ability to get prepared for school, to learn how to read. HUD, um, the Housing and Urban Development, which created projects um, and um, free or public housing, um, which is not free, but um, reduced rates. Uh, the Job Corps to give young people jobs. Uh, a lot of people were, um, in poverty were unemployed. So uh, a lot of college students use this program now. Uh, uh, Water Quality and Clean Air Act to try to improve the environment. Um, our industrialization for a long time had created a lot of pollution. Um, and the Highway Safety Act, creating minimum standards like seat belts in cars, which seems like a good idea, um, and Fair Packaging and Labeling Act so that you couldn't misrepresent uh, your product could not be the wonder drug to solve all your problems if it really was going to just get you sick. Um, moving on in 64, um, he faces a re-election uh, as he takes over in president, and this guy, Goldwater, is going to be um, his opponent. And Goldwater is a pretty conservative guy. Um, here we'll look. Yeah, this one's good. Uh, Barry Goldwater speaks out for a stronger America. So he's seen as trying to represent a, a right position or a very conservative position um, in a time where the country was really more comfortable heading in a left-leaning, uh, trying to create some progress and change in society. So there he is on Time Magazine, his accepting the Republican nomination. Um, and we'll skip some of that stuff for time's sake, but we're going to watch a political ad. I'm curious to see your reactions tomorrow about it, period. All right, so now the political ad. children can live or to go into the dark. We 
must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. All right, so the Daisy ad does get people's attention and actually only airs once, but um, it draws a contrast between Barry Goldwater, who was assumed to uh, take a really strong stance against the Soviet Union and more likely to maybe cause an atomic war, where uh, Johnson wants to embrace this idea of a softer approach, uh, a loving approach. Um, and so Johnson and a guy Humphrey uh, run in 64, and here's some political buttons. If I were 21, I'd vote for LBJ. LBJ all the way is really the catch slogan. You can see the big hat for Texas. Um, and there we go. And the election looks like this. We'll go a little bigger. The results, and it's really a landslide. You can see red everywhere, which represents Johnson. Um, and Goldwater only picks up a couple of southern states. Um, who uh, disagree with LBJ's um, civil rights policies, but it is a, a landslide according to the popular vote and more especially according to the electoral uh, college vote. So really uh, a mandate that they support LBJ and his policies. So this gives him momentum to move forward. And so now we're going to um, look at his civil rights involvement. We shall overcome becomes kind of a catchphrase. Um, from the president and from the movement. And so these two acts, the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, really extend um, rights to African Americans with the federal government's backing. And so LBJ and MLK, a lot of three letter names here, um, uh, really meet several times to try to figure out how can America overcome this situation. We're gonna watch a, a brief uh, snippet of a speech. And so um, LBJ's um, domestic policies really start to gain some momentum until um, his administration gets mired in the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution of 65. And really, this is the, the justification, the cause for America's increased involvement in Vietnam. It has to do with a uh, Vietnamese, uh, North Vietnamese boat attempting to or allegedly firing on a U.S. Navy uh, ship in the Gulf of Tonkin. And really, the Congress declares war um, as a result of this. We'll skip some of this stuff um, for time's sake. Um, but uh, and early on, the United States does make some, um, some victory here, but uh, it quickly changes. During 1968, when the Tet Offensive was launched, and this was an offensive by the uh, North Vietnam and the Viet Cong, which we'll talk more about uh, a little bit later on, in which they capture, uh, surprisingly, uh, American cities all around South Vietnam, really creating uh, a situation where it looks like the U.S. is going to lose the war just as they're starting to declare that the war is almost over. And so this is really bad, along with the news footage that comes home, some of the pictures um, that represent some of the, the awful things that happened in the Vietnam War. This is the first living room war, so people are able to see through uh, media uh, the war, what's going on daily, and it doesn't look good. A lot of um, violence and action, um, and uh, the American military doesn't seem to be able to handle this new type of war, this guerrilla warfare uh, that exists. A lot of um, bodies coming home and a lot of protests um, from uh, the president, um, or to the president, and lastly, because of this Tet Offensive in 1968, just as he um, should decide whether he's going to run for president again, um, a lot of this information comes out, and President Johnson is quoted as saying, if I've lost Cronkite, which was a news anchor at the time, which people really respected, I've lost the American people. Um, so Cronkite uh, wrote an editorial after going to Vietnam, basically saying this is a lost cause. There's no way we're going to win. Um, that is it, guys. Um, have a good one.